In this video, we're going to be looking at how to calculate uh, an annual churn rate um, with just a couple of custom fields on the account object and a custom formula on a report. So if I go to reports and I click into annual churn rate here, <clears throat> you can see that I have um, a churned field, that's the, the grouping. I have customer acquisition date, and then I also have annual churn rate, but it's just a grand total summary uh, at the end of the report here. So if we go to filters, I have you know customer acquisition date here and churn date here as filters that are one or two. Let's go and look at both of these fields um, first um, to see how we've set this up. So on a customer acquisition date, you can see that's a roll-up summary <clears throat> and it's going to be the earliest close date, min close date. So we're having a roll-up to the first close one date of an opportunity related to an account. So if you win you know, six opportunities with an account, we're looking for that first win, which is gonna be our customer acquisition date. Now, if we go to churn date, you can see this is just a date field. Um, so nothing too special here. We're just using uh, a date field. I'll show you some automation that we have populating that. And then we also have churned as the checkbox. And this is also just a checkbox field, uh, but this can be um, kind of automated or you can do it manually. So if I go to workflows here, you can see that I have just a churn date uh, workflow rule. And what happens is when the churn checkbox is checked, it automatically stamps the churn date with uh, the date of today. So we'll click into this just so you can see it. Formula equals today. So this happens when a churn date or when an account is churned, it stamps a churn date. Um, so th there is a simple way to automate that. I, I didn't want to do it on this example because it really depends on what your structure looks like uh, in Salesforce. If you could automatically calculate a churn, for example, maybe you have uh, an opportunity where the type is renewal. You know, if you lose a renewal, then this is automatically a churn. Um, so there, there are circumstances where you can automate this whole process. Um, but for example's sake, I have uh, both fields here when we're looking at churn, which is uh, churn date and churned as manual uh, fields, manual entry fields. Uh, and then the only other item in this is again, customer acquisition date. So let's go back over to the report and check out what we've done. We're looking at customer acquisition date all time for our main filter, uh, just because I want to see all of our customers um, throughout throughout time. Uh, that's the that's the main filter I want to set before we move into here into these specific date filters. So I then want to check uh, customer acquisition date equals this year and churn date equals this year. The reason why I have this filter up here first. Uh, is because there might be a circumstance where you may want to see uh, quarterly churn rate, monthly churn rate. Uh, you may want to you know, play with this final number uh, and check that uh, uh, you know, in, different, uh, in different types of uh, measurements. So our first filter, customer acquisition date has to be this year uh, and churn date has to equal this year. And this is an or function. So as long as one of these is true, which again, we already have this one up here. So this one's always going to be true. Um, then uh, we're really just pulling in the churn date, the records that had a churn date within the year as well. If we look at the outline, I've just added some you know standard fields here. And then I, I threw in the churn as the grouping because ultimately we're gonna wanna check how many of these are true versus the total number uh, of records. 
So if we go to annual churn rate, you can see that the formula that we're using is parent group val, accounts that have churned as the summary, divided by row count. So I wanna take all the accounts that have churned divided by the uh, total amount of accounts that populate in my report. And I want to calculate this at the grand summary level. You can see I'm not doing it at the row level here in the background. And what you end up with is this report with your churn rate. Um, so again, there, there could be some different caveats just depending on how you have opportunities and accounts set up. Uh, but really you just need to identify which accounts have churned uh, and then within your formula, be able to uh, subtract or divide that into the amount of uh, accounts that you have acquired that year. Uh, so that's why this, this field, which is a simple roll up becomes very important.